Okay, good afternoon. My name is Andrea Fidalgo. I am presenting an European project from the Tempus, so it started a bit earlier than the ones we saw before. It is a big project. It involves several universities from Europe and uh, North Africa. Uh, you can see there the coordinator actually is University of Limoges, but it involves universities from Belgium, Romania, Portugal, and from three uh, North Africa countries. So it was, uh, it is, or it was, because it was over uh, this month, it was a three year project. From North Africa, we have 11 universities in three different countries. And the, the objective that, that was actually attained was to give a third year bachelor's degree in electronics and optics. This was <coughs> actually executed. So the idea is you pick uh, students that already have two full years of study are almost, so they have one year to graduate, and the third year is replaced by a, by a non online course that will give them a degree in electronics and optics for embedded systems. The target groups are in North Africa, so this is intended for people in North Africa that are in the North African universities. They study there for two years, and in the third year, they will do an online course. They did an online course, and they get a degree. This, is, this was much harder than it sounds, or it, at least people that are used to the dealings of uh, higher education should know this is a bit complicated to accomplish. The course was, you had to build a program, you had to divide, define, define technical units, its contents, its shadow, etc., etc., etc. Then you had to make all this work. So we needed uh, some kind of environment. We used Moodle, and we used online labs, we used several other things. Something, some say, some th thing I didn't say, we are talking about North African countries and France. So the, it, there is a natural, uh, in, they tend to do things in French, but the, co the course was given in English. So the idea was you need to, give, to have students that had adequate preparation in English, and those who didn't have it, we had preparatory courses. Uh, so we had to prepare also the English part, the technical part, labs, everything was prepared in advance. And a very difficult task was the one on the, on the bottom, almost on the bottom, was the course accreditation. Because the course must give an actual degree that was accredited for f the most, the biggest number of uh, universities or entities. We had some problems here, but I'll talk about them later. Then we had to select students and have them actually go into the course. So the course was divided in 14 technical units, 14 different subjects. We are talking about digital electronics, analog electronics, embedded systems, uh, English instrumentation. You can see it there in the paper. So the idea is to give a full third year degree. There are some optical uh, and physics uh, subjects because this is with a French university that has a big component of optics. So it is there, hence the name electronics and optics. We have also optional units to prepare uh, some students to the course that weren't, that haven't so very good basis in electronics or optics. So we have some optional units for those that think that they could use some earlier preparation. And also English, some English classes. Okay, how did you do this? We did this in three main, main ways. First one we call asynchronous lectures, basically video or complementary uh, lectures that use some way in which the student can t learn by himself. It, uh, it doesn't require the teacher to be available at that moment. Then we have several automated uh, evaluation methods, multiple choice tests, and uh, some other uh, variables. We are using, like I said earlier, we are using Moodle. So everything that Moodle provides us, we try to use. So we give them all the tools they can use to try to learn by themselves. But we don't think this is enough. It is, wasn't enough. We have some slides later saying this. So we also gave them supporting materials, but we must also give them some other things that are uh, synchronous. So let's, I'm talking about TU05 now as an example. It was the T, technical unit, TU means technical unit. It was the one that was devo developed in, in ISEP, so it's the one I'm talking about. 
It uh, consists of two, 21 pre-recorded classes, never larger than 20 minutes. It was our experience that if you get uh, it, a single session to be longer than 20 minutes, students will often stop paying attention. I'm talking about 20 minutes of continuous teaching. It's n uh, usually when you have a physical lesson, we have one hour, but there are some level of interactivity. If you are talking alone, 20 minutes is what we think is the limit. The student can see the lecture how many times he wants. He has a lot of uh, supporting material and uh, self-evaluation sorry, self-evaluation quizzes, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, exercises, lots of support uh, material. Uh, these are some examples. Uh, we have here one simple, this is a teacher of course, so this is a simple example. And this is a quiz that the student can make. We, have, we made a small detail. We made each quiz uh, being um, an obstacle. So you get one video, then a quiz about that video. You must get a good grade on the quiz to see the next video. This is not used for evaluation, uh, but it is a way for them to have to see the video until they really understand what's being taught. The questions are not hard. It's not meant to be hard. It's meant to make them see the video and s make sure they saw the video. So this is the asynchronous, the synchronous part. Sorry, uh, we have lots of other materials that are available, and we have synchronous sessions where we intend to to, uh, to answer questions, solve uh, some issues they may be. Uh, still uh, in their minds and also give them some extra information if they require it. We don't have nothing, we don't teach nothing here, uh, in our, or at least we don't have nothing new, but we will answer any questions. We have some tools, this is Adobe Connect, that we can allow us to teach everything else. We can repeat some things they need. And we have some experience that told us that this is a very important part because students always come here with lots of doubts. Videos were very clear, but they were not enough. So this was in short, I, we have lots more in the paper, but this is in short the conclusions we took. Students are used to interactive classes. We are talking about students that are in the third year. This is a third year degree, so they had two years of normal interactive classes. They are used to them. So there is a, a, a considerable change that they need some time to adapt or some help to adapt. Uh, recorded classes, we believe, are more time efficient. We tried several things in the, in the project. Interactive classes were not efficient because the students were there without knowing everything, knowing anything. So they were in there do, uh, trying to get the information from us. So the idea we had is recorded classes given to them. They have to listen to the videos, see the videos, use the support materials, and then we make the interactive classes when they supposedly already know what they are studying. So we think this is the best approach. There were some problems, of course, but uh, to give uh, uh, this kind of uh, course, this seems to be very important. However, student participation in those interactive classes was very diverse. Some students have lots of doubts. They already said, I have a doubt in video in minute five or in slide three or something like that. Some other were there just to see what we were going to say. So those additional resources, forums, emails, some lots of other resources were necessary. To the practical part, the complementary practical part, this is a physics, electronics, and optics course. Uh, so we need remote laboratories. There is no third year degree in our area that doesn't need a laboratory. And in these courses, we need remote laboratories. In technical terms, we had a remote laboratory in France and uh, one remote laboratory in each uh, partner country. One university in each uh, African country had a remote laboratory and they all shared those resources. So uh, we used virtual experimentation via, via software, we used real remote laboratories, remotely accessible, and we tried to have uh, everything shared. So a student in Morocco could use a laboratory in Tunisia, a student in Algeria could use a laboratory in France, and in theory, he would never know or have to know where every laboratory was. So this is just a picture of one laboratory. That I think this one is in France. 
and it required, in this case, to use remote access to virtual instruments. So they could control the oscilloscope, the power supplies, and some switches on the experiment to do several experiments. This is not the main idea of the paper, but this is to just to give you an idea of what a remote laboratory was. Okay, the biggest problem we had, and uh, it's a problem in uh, lots of European projects that have online degrees or online masters or something like that, is have the course accredited. So the students are going to spend one year of their lives trying to get a third year degree. They are expecting at the end to have some uh, recognition of their work. So we had trouble, but we could get the course accredited in France, Morocco, and Tunisia. You couldn't get it accredited in Algeria. Uh, there are s we had some issues that, for I think it's useful information, uh, some uh, authorities won't uh, uh, credit a course that is fully online. This is not a problem exclusive in North Africa. It's a problem that appears everywhere. So some uh, authorities won't uh, give you a degree if you took it fully online. Others, and we have this experience in Morocco, will give you the degree, but you have to do the final exam in a physical room with a physical teacher watching over them. This makes some sense because we, we all know that uh, if it is a fully online course, you can cheat easily or easier. So they will, they gave us some problems with this. The idea is just to give you an idea, we had 6,600, more than 600 candidates, 15 from, I well, we can see that the numbers, they all enrolled in the course. And this was the actual final result. This was last month. We had only 24 students that enrolled. We had 24 students enrolled. Only 11 concluded the course. The course wasn't supposed to be easy. It wasn't supposed to be a given thing. It was supposed to be a hard course that would give them a degree from a French university that they could use in Europe. So this is a low success rate for some, in some term, but it is a real success rate. Those are the actual graduates, and uh, just a side information, this required the involvement of 42 teachers from all these countries. And as a conclusion, as far as we know, this is the first online undergraduate course in this area, having several countries at the same time, the first to give a fully legal joint diploma. When I say joint diploma, it is because it is a French and Moroccan and North African diploma. We addressed this successfully. Our problem now is obviously, as many projects here, the sustainability, how to get the money or the funding to keep this working. Thank you for your time. <laughs>